To celebrate the launch of the 200th Quest, we thought we'd take a little bit of time out of our busy days to talk about your top 10 quests of all time. And to start with, let's talk about number 10, which is Missing Presumed Death. That was my first ever project, first ever piece of content, um, straight out of training. Um, and yeah, it was a, like, I had to kick off the sixth age basically after like lead on from the world wakes. And to me as like a person that was new, like to, to the games industry pretty much, like just done training straight out. I was like, okay. <laughs> Seeing Sliske in Missing Presumed Death as like a much more developed character. I had kind of a vested interest and then like playing through, I was like, oh, is it going to be good? But then it was like, it was how I would imagine Sliske to be. So that was really cool. I think I was, I was definitely like aware that you'd sort of, you know, made Sliske a popular character in The World Wakes, and I was like, right, I've, I've got to do this right. You know, the whole kind of quest was a pretty cool experience in terms of, like, starting off in a very small kind of way, what's going on, why are these people dead? Because we didn't want to reveal that it was about the gods from the start, so that's why the whole beginning bit was trying to sort of mask that. And then suddenly you turn up at this, you know, the Imperium Citadel, and you've got all these important characters there, and the gods are inside, and that was, like, us basically trying to be like, Bam, look at all this and make people be like, oh my God. The two main things I enjoyed about it were that you really nailed the character of Ikfarin. He came across really well as like a hero god, but also definitely the voice actor for Sliske, just spot on. And it's helped to inform the character as, as he's been developed further as yeah. well. I know, I know. Sometimes I impress even myself. Right, number nine, Dragon Slayer. It's a proper old school quest there, right? Free to play something that meant a lot to all of us as noobs. A lot of people are probably quite young when they did this quest. It's a really, really old quest back in the day. Yeah. You get your 34 quest points, you already feel like a badass because you've got into the Champions Guild. You start the quest and then you kind of aspire to kill Elvar, the poor dragon, killed by everybody. Gotta get that rune plate, yeah. right? But like you aspire to it, you're a noob, you're wearing your full rune, you've got your adamant plate body on and then you feel like you complete it. You've done it, you've completed the free to play quest set and you, you're like everybody else. You get to put your rune plate on for the first time. Um, you, you waste your money and buy it off uh, the dude for 80k. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you get scanned, but you want, it, you want it quickly and you want it fast. So, yeah, I think free, uh, Dragon Slayer, especially, an ultimate quest, like an all time favourite. Oh, nailed it. First big bit of sort of globe trotting you get to do as well, isn't it, really? It's, sort of, it's quite limited style, obviously. And then, and then you just go around the world on boats and to this island where there's a things to kill. It's awesome. Yeah, it's w weird, isn't it? Like Crandor, that's pretty much the only purpose it had in the game. And actually when we rewrote the quest, Krenda had a bit more identity, the idea of, you know, like Elvarg like ruling the skies and toasting all the boats. And it's pretty, pretty full on stuff really. It's quite an epic, it was our most epic story, I think in the early days, wasn't it? But it was also probably one of the earliest places that we were seeding ideas like the Stone of Jazz, these really big story ideas that we had even back then. Number eight is Dishonor Amongst Thieves. I think that was another challenging one in that I was sort of given the brief to do a, a big like, heist quest with a team of all this like roster of all these major characters. So first off, like picking them and getting the players to vote on them, mm -hmm. um, which obviously saw the introduction of Nomad. Put them in a poll and everyone's like, oh my God, and just landslide vote to win it. Um, and then like obviously we've had people sort of um, getting involved with the costumes of Nomad and stuff like that as well. And just everyone's been loving his return. I think it was also cool to see um, Jared, the werewolf, because like we haven't really done very much with werewolves and like kind of seeing him as a major part as well was like really exciting, I think, and nice for people because there's quite a lot of interest for werewolves and we kind of haven't fulfilled it so far, I think. It's nice to do something interesting with uh, Zamorak's character as well, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know, like back in the day here, there was just a name, like he's the evil god, Saradomian's the good god, very simplistic and one dimensional, but. I love all the stuff we've been doing with the Six Age in fleshing out these characters and giving them more balanced personalities. Mm. Zamorak was missing that, I think, and this quest has really brought him more to life and explained a bit more about who he is. Okay, should we move on? So number seven is a Recipe for Disaster, which was weirdly enough our 100th quest. Um, our first attempt at a kind of multi-layered multi-chaptered quest, all released in one go, all with different kind of requirements, which is kind of very similar to, you know, what we've done with the 200th quest. Um, and all kind of culminating in this weird experience with this crazy mage who uses food 
uh, to do magic. It's about as brunescape as it comes, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, sort of I think so. Gi <laughs> fighting a giant animated Christmas pudding, uh, you know, that, that's some pretty crazy yeah. stuff right there, right? I think it, it kind of harks back to what you say about having individual developer stamps on things. Yeah. The way you've all, all of those sub-quests were made by different developers and each one of them has their own voice in that quest. Mm -hmm. Is a really nice touch, I thought. Certainly the 200th quest, I feel, is a spiritual successor to the 100th quest. Certainly taking the mickey, but in, in a kind of light-hearted... Yes. Um, just celebrating quest, really. Yeah. Just harking back to the past and bringing those memories back. Number six, it's the branches of Darkmire. Anna, all, all yours. It was my first big project. Um, it was pretty swiftly after I joined, mm -hmm. and I kind of fought for it because I was really interested in the series. Yeah. Um, and obviously Titan was like leaving it and everyone really loved him and loved the series yeah. and it was a lot of pressure kind of taking it on. I think one of the main things I really liked about it was developing the character of Vanescula. Yes. Because okay. so far she hadn't really done that much, she kind of hinted she was quite interesting, mm -hmm. but like there wasn't really much to her. Um, and kind of bringing her in and making kind of a stronger character out of her was really cool. You have this sort of choice as well, as I remember, of how much you sort of get into the vampire role, whether you're going to start randomly slaughtering people and things like that as well, which is always yeah. fun. A lot of the things that Branch has brought, brought into the series that we want to continue forward are those tough choices. Mm -hmm. um, how much you kind of get into that vampire role and how much you kind of have to give up of humanity, like the really dark edges. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's, for me at least, the, the really great thing that Branch has brought to the game. So we're gonna see more of that then? I'm not saying anything. <gasps> Almost a teaser. <laughs> Almost a teaser. All right, number five is Plague's End. The quest that you needed to complete in order to access Prif Dinas, the elf city, and the combination of 10 years worth of storytelling. There was a lot to kind of bring into that quest, a lot of story th threads that the Elf series has, has left dangling. Um, and uh, John A did a fantastic job mm -hmm. bringing all of those elements together and setting up the city as well. I mean, it was a big ask, but did a grand job of it. I want to just bring up the unicorn in Underground Pass because like the star <laughs> will kill the unicorn. <laughs> Do you, know that, do, you know, do you know that moment where you're, you're at the top, you've got the boulder and you just push it off yeah. and then you kill the unicorn in Underground Pass? Like, underground you know, Don't that's... even think about it, do you? you just push it. <laughs> yeah. just like, like, time. Kill the unicorn, there we go. Like, that's at the very, very, very beginning of the I, quest. I have to it. say, I was surprised that Underground Pass wasn't on the list, actually. A bit of a spoiler note for the ones in the future, but I was surprised that um, Underground Pass wasn't there because for years, that was the. I remember when we converted from Classic to RS2, that was the one that everyone was excited about. Like, how are you going to do it? What's it going to look like? Number four is Fate of the Gods. Zaros, up to that point, had just been uh, an idea, a notion, and he's this really popular character who wasn't actually a character. So, being given the chance to bring him to life and have him live up to and hopefully exceed kind of player expectations. Yeah was uh, really, uh, it's like my favourite moment of the company. It wasn't just Zaros though, was it? You know, you've got Elder Gods, you've got all sorts of stuff yeah. going on there. Some pretty big stuff. It wasn't enough bringing Zaros back. We snuck a bit of Saren in there. Just uh, dropped an Elder God in as well. And yeah. oh, like the end of the universe too. We can't forget though, the way in which Zaros gets his armour at the end, where it flies <laughs> yeah. on, it's just, that, that, for me, that's one of my favourite parts of it. Just we toned that down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave a lot of feedback on that, yeah. So ultimately, you get the shard of Zaros as well, so you gonna get to talk to him again, you get to continue to talk to him, and there's gonna be more in the storyline at of, some point. So. <laughs> I got a lot of stick from that, from our QA team. Just Zaros giving you a little part of his himself. Right. We were joking. Uh, <laughs> Like internally, we were referring to the quest as Fifty Shades of Purple. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I can't wait to see the moment where Zaros and Zamorak meet again. That's just going to be incredible. That will be an epic cutscene. I will fight whoever wants to do that <laughs> to be able to, to write that. Let's dialogue. go, Steve. Me and you. <laughs> Throw it down. <laughs> nice. I've got this like idea that Slisca appears in the middle with the staff of Armadil, oh! throws it in the middle, and he's just like, go. Yeah. I thought you were going to say just holds it out, and they both just run into it, and he's like, well. <laughs> nice. It failed. Let's talk about number three. Number three. Well. 
one of my favourites, I've got to say, um, you know, in terms of like cementing the Dragonkin forever in the history of RuneScape. Um, number three is the Ritual of the Majorat. And at the time when we launched it, we, we had two or three quests all come out at the same kind of time, culminating in the, in the Ritual of Majorat. Actually, you know, working, w working with the Majorat, working out what's going on and watching them you know, rejuvenate and come back to life with that killer cutscene right at the end. That's great, when you just see them all team up and it's not like one of them does the, they all literally like chuck in between them yeah. and slam him on the floor and it's just like, oh, that was badass. It's, no, it's almost like WWE, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like orchestrated, like three person attack. It was proper brutal. Like at the time I was amazed the graphics guys had managed to do something like that because it was quite intense. Like it was right at the top of what we were capable of doing right then. And it's, it's always nice looking back at quests and seeing how our technologies have improved and the new kind of toys we get to play with these days. Part of the quest I remember is running, when you're running through the jungle and the flame, oh yeah, like right. flaming rocks I landing. Remember, I remember that. <laughs> and at the point that it came out, obviously on release, everyone's trying to do it. Loads of people trying to do it first. Like people hiding behind trees, like all your friends are yeah. dying, and like yeah. they're like, you, you know, you're on, you're on comms with them on Skype or yeah. something. They're like, no, and you're like, ha ha, like you get to pass them at a part of the quest, like just camping out behind a tree. Is he called Certain Death? Certain Death. Certain Death, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was great. It was just hanging around at the front, got nuked by a fireball. There's something about that quest as well, like at the very end, um, you've got Sisuke, um, and it's something, I can't remember his exact line, but he says something, which when we were making the world wakes, we were like, yeah. He's the interesting character. Like yeah. it was that line, just at the very end, we were like, "Oh, we should." He tries should to do turn you him. into one of his. Uh, yeah, white yeah, yeah. Exactly. Barrow whites. That's right, because he gets Akrasay, doesn't he? Which like heroically he's, throws. Yeah, him it's like he was after himself. you, yeah. which is why we were like, "Oh, okay." Like, uh, I'm going to add you to my collection. Nothing about that. Yeah. yeah. Number two, almost at the top spot. So close, yet so far. Number two is the world wait. Getting the Quarium Sisters project, um, I think it was from Mod Osborne, and it was basically like, yeah, we're going to kill Gothics. <laughs> and it was like, oh, okay, no, no pressure at all. Like, you know, it's only the entire storyline so far of like the edicts and stuff like that. Yep. It's like, never mind about all that, we'll just, we'll just kill him. It's like, great, this is going to go well. We needed that drama, <laughs> yeah, though, to kick to off like the beginning of the sixth age. We wanted that kind of that turmoil, the concept of the gods coming back and fighting over the very, the, the, you know, the earth that all our players move around on. We wanted that drama. It felt good, right? No. See, this is what <laughs> I was gonna, it was really weird. When I started, I wasn't particularly, I didn't particularly like Guthics. Um, and during the quest, I actually started to feel really sorry for him. Mm -hmm. So when I was writing the actual trying to kill him, I was like, I felt really sad doing it. I really liked the um, kind of bringing all of the characters together, like big characters, so like Nex or the Majora, and like I think we hadn't really done that that much before. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we'd done it a little bit, but like just kind of getting them all together for this massive battle of like Ziliana's trying to come in and Krill's there and stuff like that. Yeah. It was quite exciting to kind of do that, but also quite nerve wracking as well, like dealing with so many developers' characters. It was quite kind of. I didn't want to mess anyone yeah. up. I love the sense of escalation of it as well, like the whole sense of going down the rabbit hole basically and discovering more and more things and then going, oh, okay, this is what's going on. <laughs> and like, you know, then being almost sort of out of your depth in this situation where the world is basically on a knife edge. It's just, yeah, that's pretty damn good. For that to happen within the, uh, the space of one sort of narrative arc, that's, that's pretty awesome. Mm. Number one. Number one is while Guthix sleeps. Probably the most epic piece of content that we had ever launched at that point in time. The longest development period that we've ever had for any single individual quest. It was the most momentous quest when we did it. So a lot of the quests today we see, you know, the gods change in the sixth age, there's a lot of change. Back then there wasn't as much real change. That's true. And while Guthix sleeps was a momentous quest at the time, you rounded, up, uh, you rounded up a lot of NPCs from the game that you'd interacted with. They were slain. You know, Lucian was involved. The Stone of Jass, or real development on the Stone of Jass, one of the biggest outer artifacts, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Again, content at the end with tormented demons. And as a whole, it was a, it was a large quest and it had real impact on the game. The dolmen in um, While Gothic Sleeps, when you're doing all the stuff with the herbs, 
uh, and there's this massive like sundial effect and it suddenly spins around and the whole thing lifted up. For me, it's one of my favorite puzzle moments in the game because you get lots of things where you're like I fought a big monster and like ha ha rah rah and like nice shiny cutscene but this was like something I'd done from a puzzle that was pretty cool. Working on the world wakes we were always very conscious of it's kind of the sequel yeah. to um, Margothic Sleeps and like I say like it kind of kicked everything off really it's like the very first little kind of steps I think. It's interesting how many of these storylines are kind of influenced by the Stone of Jazz isn't it? And like how important it is to the kind of narrative. It's our one ring. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, it's only one of, um, who knows how many Elder Artifacts. Well, we know, obviously, but <laughs> we're not going to tell you. <laughs> um, listen, um, thanks very much for spending some time talking about your favourite quests. Um, I'm sure we'll all enjoy playing through the 200th quest live on our tubes as soon as possible. And thank you all for listening to us uh, go on about our favourite stories, uh, and thanks for contributing to the top 10. I look forward uh, to being here and talking to you about our 300th quest, hey? Right, I think it's worth raising a glass to that one. Cheers, cheers. Thank you very much, RuneScape.